is difficult to watch, but this video was seen around the world after it was posted online. It ended in chaos, bullets, and blood. A shaman lay dead. A Canadian man on a spiritual journey brutalized by a vigilante mob for allegedly killing their village elder. To understand what happened, we've come to this bustling town carved out of what was once the Amazon jungle. So, I want to go back to the scene of the crime where this happened. What, what's the name of the place? It's a. It's called Victoria Gracia. It's a, uh, a small, tiny village just on the outskirts of uh, Pucallpa. Okay. What kind of reception do you think a Canadian TV crew is going to have? I mean, obviously, the first media to show up there ever since uh, Sebastian's death and Olivia's death. I would imagine it's going to be a pretty um, frosty reception. Simeon Tegel is a journalist who lives and works in Peru. He's our guide on the ground. When we arrive in Victoria Gracia, we're immediately met with suspicion. So he definitely is not, doesn't want to talk, and he also says he wasn't here that day. What I might say to him is, we'll come back tomorrow. Do you mind if we just walk around just a little bit, if, if, if that works? Yeah. You can just see the fresh paint, orange paint. That's her house, which has been painted since um, the killing. We want to see the site where the shooting took place before Sebastian was lynched by villagers. But before we even get to Olivia's house, the man we just met calls us back. Tienen miedo. Sí, sí. He said that uh, the people are scared and they don't want us to. Um, they don't want us to go to the house uh, now and they'd rather that we come back tomorrow, talk about it with the Presidenta, the, the mayoress, and, um, and, and take it from there. Scared of what? Um, foreigners, was what he said. They're scared of foreigners. They're scared of us? Yeah. Hello. Um... My name's Sebastian. Sebastian's journey began with this video he posted on YouTube. I'm introducing myself. Um, 37 years old, father of a beautiful boy. It's four and a half. It's a bit of a pain in the butt today, actually, but <laughs> he's pretty awesome. Um, I'm just uh, in the midst of a career change, and I'm looking for some help. He wanted to learn more about plant-based medicines to help treat people with illnesses and addictions. There's different forms of addiction and some of them are, are acceptable by society. But it doesn't mean that you're healthy. Just because You become more closer to what the local indigenous people will say, you know, closer to the earth. And uh, he just saw this is an opportunity, this going down to Peru to investigate this I don't know what you call it a drug culture. Uh, I don't know what you would call. Um, yeah, I mean, they, I mean, they talk to, they talk about ayahuasca as being the medicine, as being a uh, yeah, treatment. Yeah, medicine. There, uh, that's a that's a good way. Yeah, as the medicine would be um, a, a means to to help people here and back in Canada. That it's not here, and perhaps he could he could bring it here, and uh, he wanted to be a healer, a healer of some type. Yes. This is what I want to make my life's work. I'm going to do my best to help other people. I'm going to do my best to change myself. There's just so much, so much trauma and hurt in the world. Sebastian felt he could help people heal with this, ayahuasca, a mixed brew of Amazonian roots and leaves that creates a powerful hallucinogen used for centuries by indigenous people. Now Westerners are using ayahuasca to treat everything from PTSD to drug and alcohol addictions. His quest to learn more about the plant medicine led him to Olivia. Hello. 
a healer, a shaman, Olivia was also an activist for Indigenous and environmental rights. What kind of hole has Olivia's death left in this community? Well, initially, of course, if you kill a matriarch in a matriarchal society, that has that is a ripple effect that is tremendous. The other piece of it is, is that she held a huge amount of plant knowledge. A shaman of her level would know 500, 600 plants that can address a, a wide range, a huge, a huge amount of maladies. Mick is taking us to meet a cousin of Olivia, who is a shaman himself. Where are we and where are we going? Well, you know, we're on the outskirts of Pucallpa, and uh, this is more of the indigenous area here. This is all Shipibo land, and uh, this is this Maestro Delphine, who is uh, who's one of the renowned shamans of the area. This is an ayahuasca vine here? This is the ayahuasca vine. We're hoping that Delphine will allow us to observe an ayahuasca ceremony like to better ceremony. understand the power of the plant and the hold it had on Sebastian. If you're having a hard day, feel stressed out, it's hard to snap out of it, but just go out into the woods. Sebastian first traveled to the jungle a few years back. The first time he went to Peru, I was not concerned. I thought, great, take this journey, um, find yourself, come back, and um, probably you'll have some deeper insight and awareness. As Sebastian began to experiment with ayahuasca in his travels to Peru, he became darker, more distant. I do think it overloaded his nervous system over a number of years he had shifted and was hard to connect with. We were good friends and trying to like connect was a little bit of like playing this to like, ah, oh, there you are. Okay, let's, let's talk, you know? Each trip seemed to close him off to us. He wouldn't talk about what he did on the trips and he wouldn't talk about a lot of things that went on. When we return to Victoria Gracia, a crowd gathers, and it's clear we're not welcome. But the village leader agrees to talk to us. She says with every visit to Olivia, Sebastian grew more desperate. Pero él venía e insistía a la abuelita que tome ayahuasca. Pero la abuelita no tomaba ayahuasca. No quería. No era una persona normal. Algunos eh, vecinos le encontraba ahí, escondidos ahí, eh, ahí este, en la oscuridad. ¿Qué queriendo hacer? Were, were people in the community afraid of Sebastian? Sí, tenía miedo. Last January, according to multiple accounts, Sebastian was caught by villagers wielding a long club. They took him to police like they had before. So she's saying it's three different times that they caught Sebastian prowling around and took him to the police station. So after repeated conflicts with villagers, why did Sebastian keep returning to see Olivia? The answer may lie in the ayahuasca experience, which involves a strict plant diet overseen by the shaman. There was definitely a, a reason that he kept coming back because... Here at this jungle back. retreat, we meet and, an American uh, studying plant medicines. He says the ayahuasca diet can be dangerously destabilizing. That led me to believe that he had what we call a broken diet, which is when somebody has a plant inside of them uh, that's twisted and, and broken, and they start to have a lot of negative repetitions. It's like, an, it's like an addiction, actually, where you're constantly looking for trouble. He definitely spoke to me about dieting, and I think that was something that was um, one of the things that might have thrown him a little over the edge. I mean, first off, anybody on this, any of these types of diet, it's like they're not eating real food. Like their electrolytes, their protein, their, their every base nutrient is being compromised. 
It seems the diet was controlling Sebastian's mental state, and only Olivia could break the hold it had on him. When Sebastian failed to come home to Vancouver Island for the holidays last December, a family member feared the worst. She wrote on Facebook, Gotta ask, does anyone know where Sebastian could be? Family cares and has no idea. Two days later, a response from Sebastian. I am alive. Sebastian returned home days later. Family and friends pleaded with him to stay, but something was calling him back to the jungle. Most of us here in this part of the world that knew him well were like, don't go back there. Is that actually gonna help you? Be here, you have a sun, you have a life, you have a, a world here that um, you, you can be part of. Why are you going? What began as a spiritual healing journey then took a dangerous turn. I saw him in the cafe and as he left, my friend said, well, he just asked me for a gun. And I said, wow, that's, that's crazy. Those who knew Sebastian dispute this refusing to believe he could have ever pulled the trigger that killed Olivia Aravello. In my heart, I know that Sebastian would never have done anything like that. First off, here's a person who's never held a gun in their life. Uh, second off, um, his deep respect for this medicine and for these elders that brought this uh, just don't fit into that picture of, of, of being that person. He has never had uh, access to guns here in Canada. We've never had guns here at home and um, have never ever used or even talked about them in any way, shape or form. Last March, he posted this. I'm off to jungle to do some searching and fix the mine. See you once I'm healed. But there was no coming back. This would be Sebastian's final trip to the jungle. We get word the shaman Delphine will allow our camera to get an intimate glimpse inside an ayahuasca ceremony. So this and is the longhouse? Yeah, or the maloca or ceremonial maloca. house, the longhouse. Westerners do come here to take ayahuasca with Delphine, but tonight it's locals only. Ayahuasca. About a dozen people are here, including a woman with diabetes and a man dealing with depression, hoping the ayahuasca, or vine of the little death as some call it, will help break their psychic shackles. They drink a thick and bitter brew that contains DMT, a potent, naturally occurring hallucinogen. They'll drift off into a dream state, confronting past traumas, reconnecting broken pieces of their past. The visions can last hours. The impact for some will last a lifetime. Have you ever tried ayahuasca? Sure, sure. What was your experience like? Oh, it's challenging, but uh, but very uh, but with a rewarding outcome. Individuals often afterwards feel a sense of of calm 
a sense of being at peace, a sense of connectedness to uh, nature, insight into their own personal psychodynamics, often a sense of the road, the road ahead, the path ahead, in the right context with the right intention, with the right support system, ayahuasca can be remarkably uh, therapeutic. And, and that's what's drawing Westerners down to the Amazon basin. Things could have went sideways for me a lot in my life, and they didn't. That was just pure luck. So I'd like to just thank the universe or the spirits or God or whoever is looking out for me. Though Sebastian had come to the jungle to heal, the reality was his universe was spiraling out of control. What I would like now, if you would, could you please show us Olivia's house and where this happened? That is where he killed her, that's where she was lying. What we're trying to understand is why. Why would Sebastian kill a, a respected woman like Olivia? Dentro de nuestra perspectiva, las causas han sido por un familiar. Was there, a, was there a feud, was there a conflict between Sebastian and the Aravelos family? Se presume que hay una deuda pendiente por parte del uno de los hijos de Olivia hacia Sebastian. In early March, Sebastian posts this on Facebook. Not enjoying life right, having a rough go. Please send me prayers. Investigators say on March 30th, Sebastian walked into this police station and asked if anyone would sell him a gun. A police officer sold Sebastian a 9mm Taurus pistol. The sale was witnessed, the receipt notarized. But after repeated run-ins with villagers, why would a police officer sell Sebastian a gun? We went to track him down to find out. Estoy buscando el oficial Glauco Utia Quispe. Utia. Sí, sí. So he's working today, but not here. He's working at the regional hospital, which is seven blocks away, until one or two this afternoon. Go now. Buenos días. Hola, buenos días. Ahí estamos buscando el oficial del PNP, Glauco Utia. A Utia. Utia, Utia. Está solicitado. Yeah, this is the guy. This is him. It was quickly apparent the stoned face officer felt no remorse, no responsibility. What was your reaction when you found out that this was the gun that he used to kill Olivia? Ya no era responsabilidad mía, ya que yo la había vendido eh, de forma legal, notarialmente. Cabe en la persona que yo le he vendido ya. Sí. But the reality is, and I know he understands reality, yeah. two people are dead. Yeah. Two people are dead mm -hmm. because of his decision to sell this weapon. Mm -hmm. Does he not see the connection between his gun and mm -hmm. two tragic deaths? Sí. Ya, este, como le indico, yo, el armamento, so he has no sense of responsibility, culpability. Apparently not. Apparently yeah. not. Yeah. I have a lot of love and gratitude for the process of life. Um, I'm very thankful for uh, how things have went. Um, I thank you and then I'm going to pay you back and I'm going to try to help people. Thanks a lot. Investigators say on April 19th, shortly before noon, Sebastian, armed with a gun, rode a motorcycle to Olivia's house. They say he wanted to collect the unpaid debt from her son. Witnesses say Sebastian fired a warning shot when he arrived, drawing a crowd of villagers. Then Olivia emerged from the house to confront him. La presión 
El conflicto, el ver el insulto, le apunta con el arma de fuego y le dispara dos tiros. I find it hard to believe that uh, this actually occurred. Why is it so hard to believe for you? I just know my son. Um, so something has changed in him, something drastic that if this actually occurred as, as has been indicated, that uh, he, uh, he was no longer himself. He was no longer the person that we knew here. Something had uh, drastically happened somewhere. What Gary Woodruff didn't know is police discovered among Sebastian's possessions drugs prescribed in Canada. Clonazepam, used to treat anxiety, and olanzapine, used to treat mental conditions including schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. We learned mixing these meds with ayahuasca can create psychotic episodes. When you're in a psychotic state, you have a false perception of reality. You, you can become quite delusional and um, your judgment is skewed. So this individual may have misperceived others around him as being a threat to him, whereas in reality they weren't. Are you convinced that Sebastian Woodruff pulled the trigger uh, on the gun that killed Olivia Araveos? Sí, científicamente está comprobado. How? Uno, las, los restos que quedaron en sus manos y el resto que también dejó en las mangas del polo que tenía ese día. The officer who sold Sebastian the murder weapon is now under investigation. Sebastian did not have a license to carry a weapon. What do you think of, about the fact that the police, of all people, sold your son a weapon? This is a surprise to me. I've just learned this in the last several hours that this, this did occur. So I'm um, still processing the idea that uh, the police would actually do that in, in any country. Um, I can't believe that that happened. Moments after the shooting, the mob set upon Sebastian, and the graphic and disturbing video reveals what no parent would ever want to see. What was it like for you as a father to see this? I have never watched it. Uh, it's not something I wish to see, thank you. Four men from Victoria Gracia are wanted in connection to Sebastian's death. But they're in hiding, leaving behind a shattered community. Do you think that Sebastian got the justice that he deserved? Eh, para mí, personalmente, como mujer, como madre, eh, no deseo muerte a nadie. Ni la abuelita, ni, ni cómo lo mataron a Sebastián. There's a small memorial on a riverbank by Sebastian's favorite swimming hole on Vancouver Island. Tucked away, like the demons Sebastian struggled with. The manner of his death is very, very tragic. The incidents that happened that led to his death, again, are very tragic. I don't want to remember that. I want to remember him uh, as we knew him, as the kind, generous, loving, son, brother, father, that spouse that he was. There is one piece of our investigation that remains incomplete. We wanted to know if Sebastian had consumed ayahuasca and prescription meds prior to the shooting incident. Peruvian authorities assured us a toxicology test had been done on his body. So we requested the toxicology report. But as of this broadcast, we've yet to receive it.
one thing we do know is that shortly after the police investigation wrapped up, Sebastian's body was cremated in Peru.